This CUR program looks at the impact of reproductive inefficiency on um, milk production. Um, what we're looking at is the lactation curve of a cow, and we can vary this from first to second and third lactation. Uh, the user can actually even define uh, the equations, if you will, so you can really define your own uh, uh, lactation curve, if you will. But let's stick with the third lactation animal that we have. Uh, and what we have here is a graph uh, that shows us when the cow gets pregnant. Now their gestation length is, is pretty fixed, uh, approximately a little nine months, uh, 283 days. And of course we can vary uh, when the cow's um, calving interval uh, is in terms of how soon does she get pregnant uh, after calving. So I'm going to scale this back to the best scenario where uh, boy, she, um, uh, she has a calving interval a um, little bit under 11 months. Uh, in other words, she immediately um, uh, uh, gets pregnant uh, very quickly and goes through her nine months uh, of lactation. And now what we'll look at are some uh, milk production uh, gauges. So here I'm looking at what her average milk is, the entire lactation. And this is the milk that she produces when uh, per day of pregnancy. And so we can see that they're very, very similar because indeed most of the, of the lactation curve, the, the cow is pregnant. Now as we start to move that calving interval out further and further, in other words, the cow is spending more time per, uh, per, per period uh, with lower, lower milk yields, notice that the disparity between the average over the entire lactation versus the marginal that occurs when she gets pregnant. And so this is the driver behind um, reproductive inefficiency. Uh, the fact that uh, we're, once this cow becomes pregnant and we hang on to her for another nine months, uh, she's going to calve. Um, and we have a dry period, of course, in there too. Uh, but her milk of flow when she's lactating is only 40.8 pounds per day um, against what the uh, total was over the entire lactation. So uh, this is what she's going to contribute. To, and, and some cows reach a point where this is too low for us to want to maintain her in the herd and so this becomes the basis in which we want to cull the animal as well. Now we can also look at this um, somewhat economically, so I'm going to drive this back to a 11 month cabin or a little slightly under and look at what the net return above feed cost is. And we see that um, the returns uh, when we have a very short calving are pretty equal to uh, the entire lactation versus when the cow gets pregnant. But then as we move out in time where the calving interval gets uh, more extended, notice how quickly the return on uh, feed cost investment decreases much more dramatically, um, showing uh, the effect of being out at this later um, stage of lactation when milk production is really low. So this is a, a visual way to look at the impact of reproductive inefficiency um, on dairy production, uh, where we're solely looking at the um, uh, the flow of milk. Of course, you could make a similar argument for the flow of calves in terms of uh, their entry into the herd, and so that will be the other economic incentive. Uh, and there are some other dimensions that, to reproductive, reproductive inefficiency that aren't captured here, but this is one of the major ones. So uh, thank you.